gathered around her little white casket, wrote little notes on her casket, sorry, just because it did ping and it went off and you got caught. No. He's obviously the no. person who, behind the cover up. Yes. Dismembered, decapitated. Probably because you're trying to hide something and make sure certain details don't come out. Show cans of soup were found with holes in the lids. Hey everybody, welcome back. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Annie Elise and this is my channel, Ten to Life, where we talk all things true crime related, past cases, current cases, really just trying to bring a voice to the victims, get some justice, and generate some awareness. Before we jump into today's case, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, but you want to stay updated and in the know, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and please like, comment, and share this where you can. And if you want to be an official member of the Tend to Life community, there's a link in the description box for an official Tend to Life membership. I've been following and been interested in true crime for nearly 15 years now. And when I first decided to start my true crime TikTok and this YouTube channel back in June, one of the biggest requests that I kept getting over and over and over from you guys was to cover the case of baby Brianna. And I get a lot of requests daily, as I'm sure most creators do, but this one was one that was coming across my screen so frequently. So I decided to research it and dig a little deeper. If you've been subscribed and following along on my channel for a while now, you know that I'm very passionate about speaking out against child abuse and child trafficking. And in doing that, I'm really no stranger to a lot of these horrific cases that are going on out there involving child abuse, child sexual abuse with families, relatives, you know, the list goes on and on. But when I started researching baby Brianna's case, something inside of me was triggered and I had an actual physical reaction. I got very, very emotional. I got very sick to my stomach and I had to just actually turn my computer off and walk away. And I didn't like doing that because if you've been watching my videos, you know, Something that I constantly say and try to reinforce is that as uncomfortable as it is for us to talk about it or watch something or hear about it, imagine how uncomfortable it is for them on the other side experiencing it. And that the least we could do to bring awareness and hopefully bring some justice to them is to hear what happened and hear their story. So I kept trying to tell myself that and talk myself into reading more about this and continuing to research, but I'll be honest, I couldn't and I had to shelve it for a little bit because it was too much for me. I continued to get tons of requests to cover it for weeks and then actually months and everybody kept saying, when are you gonna cover baby Brianna? When are you gonna talk about the baby Brianna case? And so finally I had decided, you know what? I need to own what I say and I need, as uncomfortable as it is, I need to man up, for lack of a better phrase or word, and research it and talk about it. As I continued researching and putting my facts together and really trying to educate myself on this world of child abuse and human trafficking and human abuse, to be honest, I stumbled across a documentary on Magellan TV, who I need to thank as today's sponsor. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership, and it allows you to gain insight and knowledge about topics that you're passionate about. And if you're like me, I'm always looking for a new documentary. I can't get enough of them. And what's great about Magellan TV is it features genres including history, science, crime, and space. It offers documentary movies, series, and even exclusive playlists. The documentaries are also streamed without interruptions, which I absolutely love. There's a wide selection of programs available in 4K without any additional cost. New programs are added on a weekly basis and they can be watched anytime, anywhere, whether you wanna watch it on your TV, your laptop, your phone, whatever it is you choose, you can watch it anywhere, which is amazing. And as I mentioned, I stumbled across a particular documentary and it's a docuseries called Undercover Asia. There is a particular episode that really resonated with me that focuses on the modern day slave trade issues and discusses how today more than 50,000 North Korean men and women are enslaved in 40 countries. This documentary opened my eyes to even more statistics and things that are happening in the world that we really have absolutely no idea about. I highly recommend checking it out, and if you want to check out all of their options for yourself, they're offering all 10 to Life viewers a one month free trial just by clicking on that link in the description box below. I'm telling you, if you're like me and you can't get enough documentaries, docuseries, just information out there, you are going to be obsessed with this. I already have my next documentary in the queue that I'm hopefully going to watch tonight on the Manson family. There is just so much content out there. You're going to love it.
So thank you Magellan TV for giving the one month free trial to all of you viewers and let's get into the case of baby Brianna. Before we jump in, I do wanna warn you that it is extremely disturbing, it is graphic, and like all of these cases, it is truly heartbreaking and horrifying. So I wanna warn you ahead of time before we get into it that this is definitely not going to be an easy one to listen to. The story of baby Brianna is unfortunately a really hard one, but it is the ugly truth and the ugly reality of child abuse. On February 14th, 2002, in Las Cruces, New Mexico, 19-year-old Stephanie Lopez and 21-year-old Andy Walters gave birth to baby Brianna. Born on Valentine's Day, Brianna was a beautiful, healthy, happy, glowing little baby girl. The horror behind this case reveals itself just five months later in July of 2002, when Brianna was just five months and five days old. On Thursday night, July 18th, around 6 p.m., Andy Walters, Brianna's father, went out to grab a case of beer and then headed home to the house in Las Cruces, New Mexico. He returns home, and he and Brianna's mother, Stephanie, along with Stephanie's twin brother, 19-year-old Stephen Lopez, start drinking beers, hanging out, and just enjoying each other's company throughout the night. However, the next morning, Stephanie calls 911 and reports that she's unable to wake Brianna and that she has fallen out of her high chair. When Stephanie spoke with investigators, she tells them that she had about three beers the prior evening and then went to bed while the father and the uncle continued to drink beers, hang out, and play with baby Brianna. And then she tells investigators that when she woke that morning, she found Brianna on the floor and was unable to wake her. Brianna was rushed to the hospital and what was soon uncovered not only rocked the entire community, but the investigation and the case was so emotional for the officers and investigators involved that counselors were brought in to help them deal with the case. Brianna arrived at the hospital and was literally bruised from head to toe, all the way from the top of her skull to her big toe on her right foot. She had bite marks on her face, on her cheeks, on her head, on her torso, her arms, legs, everywhere. Just a short time later at 11.10 a.m., five-month and five-day-old baby Brianna dies at Memorial Medical Center in Las Cruces. As they examined Brianna and performed an autopsy, it was revealed that she sustained massive injuries both externally and internally. She had bruising all over her head and face, and her little fingers and little toes were lacerated. Brianna had 11 human bite marks in various stages of healing all over her body, massive bruises, multiple bruises, swelling of the brain, and bleeding in the membranes surrounding the brain. She also had bleeding around her optical nerves, which means that she had been violently shaken. Brianna also had fractures to both legs, and an injury expert says that this happens when you are taken and violently pulled with both legs in a jerking motion very quickly. Brianna's skull had five to seven day old fractures on two different bones. Both old and new blood was present, indicating that there was a prior injury to the brain. Brianna also had two rib fractures that were weeks old. Additionally, she had significant abrasions on her bottom that led into her bottom that indicated sexual assault. And I want to warn you, this next part is graphic, but the opening in her bottom was so traumatized that it gaped open. And during her autopsy, it was determined that it had been dilated a full inch. It's honestly... I don't even have words for it. It's horrible. Internal examination showed a half inch injury as well as additional trauma and tears to the front side. All of these horrific discoveries in Brianna's autopsy show a significant amount of abuse and long-term abuse. It revealed that she had suffered abuse almost her entire life and deputies say this was the worst case of child abuse that they've ever seen. Brianna's mother, father, and uncle, Brianna's mother's twin brother, were all arrested. They were questioned by investigators, and the investigators were able to get a little bit more clarity as to what really took place the night before Brianna died, what took place that morning, and outlines the sequence of events of what happened. Now, we already know that they were all drinking some beers together, and that according to Stephanie, she had three beers, then went upstairs, went to bed, and the father and the uncle continued to drink together and play with baby Brianna. But this is where the new details and the real story emerges. Brianna's uncle Stephen and her father Andy were drinking beers and began tossing Brianna in the air. Tossing her up in the air to where she hits her head on the ceiling and they don't catch her and she falls and hits the ground. And they did this repeatedly. Around 12.30 a.m. shortly after midnight, Brianna's father Andy goes to sleep not sure where Brianna is. Which, I have a huge problem with that. How are you going to sleep and you don't know where your newborn daughter is? That is a serious problem, first of all, and how do you even do that as a human being? How do you even do that? How can you sleep? 
At three in the morning, Andy says that he awoke to find baby Brianna on the floor, so that he covers her with a blanket and puts her in her bouncer. Why was she on the floor? Why wasn't she in a crib? Why wasn't she in a bassinet? And also, by the way, putting a baby to sleep in a bouncer is extremely dangerous. Having them in a bouncer unsupervised is extremely dangerous, period. This entire thing infuriates me. Stephanie awoke early in the morning to hear Brianna screaming in agony. She discovers Brianna covered in fresh bruises and asks Andy and Steven what happened the night before. They both told her that they had been a little rough with her. Later admitting that they had thrown her into the ceiling multiple times, hitting her head and allowing her to fall to the floor. Multiple times as though it was some kind of sick game. Both men told authorities that Brianna was screaming and wailing as this abuse continued, and Stephanie says that she didn't hear anything, that she was fast asleep and she didn't hear any of the screams from her five-month-old child. So after hearing this story from Stephen and Andy, Stephanie doesn't ask any further questions, and she goes back to sleep. I'm sorry, what? You ignore her pain and injuries, and you go back to sleep. What kind of monster are you? You clearly don't care about your daughter, and Again, how can you even sleep? At about 7 a.m., Andy Walters, Brianna's father, wakes up and admits to going and changing her diaper. He admitted to investigators that he wrapped a baby wipe around his finger and sodomized baby Brianna and then went back to sleep. It is vile. It was later discovered during police investigations that Steven Lopez, Stephanie's twin brother and Brianna's uncle, admitted that he began to sodomize baby Brianna also the night before, but then stopped because he realized what he was doing was wrong. And that's a direct quote from him. Both men violated and abused this five-month-old child. They're one man being her father and the other man being her uncle. And they had no regard for her life or well-being. They abused her, they assaulted her, and they had no remorse. So Stephanie was back asleep after discovering the bruises, discovering that she was crying in agony. She goes back to sleep, ignoring Brianna, and then wakes up again at 10 a.m. She goes and checks on Brianna, great, a little late, and realizes that Brianna isn't breathing. And that's when she makes that 911 call. From there, we know what happens. They're all arrested, they're all talked to by investigators, and everything starts to come to light. Police arrested all three of them and charged them with child abuse resulting in a death. And Andy Walters, Brianna's father, was also charged with criminal sexual penetration of a baby. In court records, Andy admitted to biting Brianna, but says, I didn't take a chunk out of her. Again, a direct quote. He also says that Stephanie also would pinch and bite Brianna when she became frustrated with her. During his interview with sheriff's deputies, Stephen Lopez, Brianna's uncle and Stephanie's twin brother, admitted to having sex with baby Brianna. Having sex with a, your five-month-old niece. And added that he and Andy had also penetrated her on several different occasions. She was beaten. She was raped by her own family. By her own family. And her mother took part in this abuse, not only biting her, but allowing the sexual assault and the abuse to happen. Brianna was relying on her mother, somebody that she should rely on, somebody that she believes loves her and should be protecting her. She relied on her and Stephanie failed her. She failed her at every single corner. She wasn't there when these men were assaulting her, raping her, beating her. Where was she? Why wasn't she protecting her daughter? Why was she complicit and allowing it to happen? Baby Brianna was horrifically abused from almost the day she left the hospital on Valentine's Day until the day she died just five months and five days later. On a daily basis, she was slapped, kicked, punched, thrown and by her father and uncle. And her mother and grandparents were also aware of this abuse that was happening, but not one of them said anything. In fact, later Stephanie's mom testified, and she testified that Stephanie would bite and pinch Brianna when she became frustrated with her, and she also said that she was aware of the abuse that was happening, including being beaten, pinched, all of it, but that she didn't want to get involved. Again, another direct quote. Sheriff records showed no signs of child abuse claims happening at the home. They had a few domestic disturbance, but nothing involving the children. The other two children, Brianna's 18-month-old brother and 8-year-old uncle, showed no signs of neglect or abuse, but were immediately placed in protective custody. The jury found Stephanie Lopez not guilty of intentional child abuse, but guilty of child abuse resulting in death. She was given a 27-year sentence. But we're going to get to what that 27-year sentence really became. Brianna's father, Andy Walters, was also convicted, and I'm going to read what he was convicted of because it's a laundry list. 
He was convicted of intentional child abuse resulting in death or great bodily harm, conspiracy to commit intentional child abuse resulting in death or great bodily harm, criminal sexual penetration of a child under 13 in the first degree, intentional child abuse not resulting in death or great bodily harm, and negligently permitting child abuse. He was sentenced to 57 years in prison. Steven Lopez, the twin brother and Brianna's uncle, was of course also convicted, and he was convicted of intentional child abuse resulting in death or great bodily harm, conspiracy to commit intentional child abuse resulting in death or great bodily harm, and criminal sexual penetration of a child under 13 in the first degree. He received a 51-year prison sentence. But it didn't stop here. As I told you, the family was aware of what was happening and was complicit in what was going on, and they were also held accountable. Andy Walter's mother, Patricia, and his brother, Robert, were also convicted of failing to report child abuse, but they were only sentenced to 60 days. How is that the sentence? How are you sentenced to two months for being complicit and not reporting child abuse and child How is that possible? You get sentenced for a longer period of time for stealing a candy bar from a store. Why isn't there a stricter punishment for this? I don't understand. No picture of Brianna was found at the home. Not a single one, not one single picture. So the lead investigator took a photo of Brianna on that autopsy table and he retouched it and edited it so that it didn't have the bruises in it because he felt like there needed to be a photo of this young child. It is the only picture of Brianna without any marks on her body. Take a minute to consume that. Not only were there no photos of her in the residence, which clearly shows they didn't care about her, but it's the only photo that exists of her without any marks or bruises, and that's because it had to be photoshopped. It's so clear that she wasn't loved by her family in any real way, and thank goodness this lead investigator took it upon himself to do this with that photo and to try to keep a sliver of her dignity and innocence because clearly her family members weren't gonna do anything about it. He knew that the community and everybody who was showing an outpouring of love and support wanted to remember Brianna in the way that she should have lived. Innocent, unharmed, happy, and joyful, and that's why he did this. What's even more heartbreaking, if you can even believe it, is that at first, nobody even came forward to claim Brianna's body. So it was her community who came together and arranged her funeral. Brianna's remaining family held a private and quiet funeral service, excluding other family members. But no headstone was placed at her grave, only a marker, and at the top of the grave was just raked the dirt completely flat. No stone, no memory, nothing, just a grave marker and dirt. People of the community, of course, wanted to do something. So they started bringing flowers, balloons, decorating this gravesite, showing that, you know, you didn't die in vain, baby Brianna. We all love you, we all care for you. But her family wanted the death to be quiet. So they ordered a metal cage surrounding the burial site so that community members couldn't get in and leave their flowers, leave their stuffed animals and their well wishes. Having you put this child through enough, now you're not even allowing the public community to come and show their support and love for her? What are you doing? In 2002, at the time of Brianna's murder, intentional child abuse resulting in death only carried a maximum sentence of 18 years. In 2005, three years after Brianna's murder, the baby Brianna bill was enacted. And this made child abuse resulting in death a class A felony. And that carried a mandatory minimum of 30 years in prison. Unfortunately, the bill can't be enacted retroactively, so it only applied to future cases, but at least it was a step in the right direction. Now remember, Stephanie Lopez, Brianna's mother, was sentenced to 27 years in prison. Brianna's mother, Stephanie Lopez, was released from prison after just serving 13 years of her sentence, meaning that she served less than half of her sentence for good behavior and was essentially completely out free after this abuse, torment, and violation of her daughter. Sentenced to 27 years and walked free after 13. How is that justice? Unfortunately, cases like this are not that uncommon. And we see family members being involved, mothers being involved, fathers being involved. And the reason it is so important, and I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again, the reason it's so important for us to bring awareness to these cases and talk about these cases is not to have some sort of sick entertainment or 
relive these gruesome details, but it's to bring awareness so that we can open our eyes to what's happening around us. So that not only are children like baby Brianna getting justice and somebody having a voice in their defense, but also so that if we start to see these behaviors or indicators in children or people at any age around us, we can't stay silent and we will know to speak up. And the only way to know that something is wrong is by educating ourselves. And the only way to educate ourselves on it is to unfortunately become privy to information like this and expose ourselves to actual real life situations and cases that have happened. It's not easy, it's not comfortable, but it unfortunately is necessary, especially in the world we're living in today where child abuse, child trafficking, human trafficking, human abuse is so rampant and being ignored by so many different people. It's the only way we'll ever be able to affect any sort of change, whether it's in the legal system or hopefully saving these kids and humans from this abuse. I know this wasn't an easy one, guys, but thank you for sticking around and listening with me. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, but you don't want to do so and you want to support the channel, please subscribe by hitting that red subscribe button below and like, comment, share this where you can, and let's continue to bring awareness to hopefully end this horrific cycle of abuse. Until the next case, guys, stay safe.